I'm here with Mike Church. You know him from his radio show. You know him from Twitter, The King Dude. How are you, Mike? I am well, Dr. Marshall. Great. Live well, on YouTube. Live on, no, we're not on Periscope. We're not on Twitter. One mistake, it will we, kill you. We're on YouTube. We are live, live on the YouTube. Good, good, good. Yeah, we're live on the YouTube. And uh, we're going to talk about, uh, there's this new trailer that just came out a couple hours ago. Uh, it's it's got Anthony Hopkins. He's playing Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. It's called the Two Popes. It has uh, Benedict the Sixteenth and Pope Francis. We're going to show that trailer in uh, just a little bit, and then talk about some uh, contemporary events, some current events, some of the things you've been covering over on on your show. So before we do that, however, we will begin with our prayer. Mike, I know you are a Latin Mass guy. You I'm a Latin Mass. Guy. You love the Latin. You pray, you pray the Rosary in Latin, I think. Don't every you? day. Every day you pray it in Latin. Um, I've been mixing in Latin with the kids in the evening. Uh, we do the try, do maybe a decade or so on the, with the Hail Marys in Latin, trying to ease everybody back into that. So uh, we'll begin with an Our Father, and then we'll get right into the show. In nomine Patris et Fidi et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater Noster, qui es in Cedi, Sancti Viceter Nomen Tuum, Adveniat Regnum Tuum, Fiat Voluntas Tua, Sicut in Cielo et in Terra, Panam nostrum quotidianum de nobis hodie, et dimite nobis debita nostra. Sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libera nos a malo. Amen. In nomine Patris, et Fidii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Prayers are so beautiful in Latin. Isn't it great? It's I mix great. them in, too. I do one decant in Latin, then I'll do the next decant in, uh, in English, and... Um, I, I have almost every prayer. I've got the uh, Sancta Michael Archangeli. I've got the Memorare. I've got the Salve Regina. I've got everything except the, uh, and I'm not sure, you're, you're the theologian, so you, you will know, the one that uh, Oremus, um, in English, it's, oh, yes. um, gosh, no, no, I'm tongue-tied. In English, it, uh, through, uh, through his only begotten son, by his life has, uh, mortem et resurrectionum. Yes, uh, I'm working on the Latin on that one. That's the only one I don't have in Latin. So <laughs> it's a tricky one. Now, now we we prayed the Rosary once together in Latin. I remember, and uh, when we did it, we did everything in Latin except the Oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires. And I've seen two Latin versions of that prayer, and I've done a little bit of research, but not enough. And I'm not sure which is the official Latin. Do you know? Have you done the research on that? Okay, so I'm with you. Um, one is uh, O bone Jesu, libera nostra okay. peccatis nostris, libera nostra uh, Gehenna nostris, salva nos ab igni inferni oribus, perdo in inferni, yes. Dicium, uh, uh, that's one, and the other one, okay. o, uh, o domine Jesu, okay. uh, debite nobi debita nostra, salva nos ab igni inferni ordi, perdo in celum omnis animas, presetim. I don't know. I so do you know, know you know them both, but when you do it in Latin, which do you do the former or do you do the latter? Well, see, I, because I've seen it printed. Now, I've seen the... Because uh, uh, I've actually done one that you didn't just say. Uh, I don't so there's know, three. Yeah, there's, it's, oh, it begins, Omi Yesu, Indulge, right, um, Indulge Peccata Nostra. See now, I've heard that one, but I've I've, I've never done. They all uh, you you probably know more land than I do because uh, you've studied St. Thomas Aquinas so much. But Omi Yesu uh, and O Bone Yesu. So Bone was just Oh good, oh good, oh, oh, oh my good Jesus. Uh, Omi would just be Oh my, right? Right. So just I, I think the salutation may just be a little different. Well, one of them begins with Dimite, and one of them begins with Indulge. So, Demite, dismiss, forgive, yeah, or dismiss, yeah, indulge, uh, indulge. <laughs> it means pardon. Indulge means to pardon. Pardon. Okay. I mean, it's the same idea, but um, yeah, I mean, both of them refer to ab igne and ferni. People are tuning out right now; like they're talking about Latin. What's going on? <laughs> anyway, I, I'm just curious because. Um, when I pray the rosary in Latin with people, often the Oh My Jesus goes into vernacular English because everybody's confused. And probably it's because Our Lady of Fatima gave the prayer, I'm guessing, in Portuguese, and then people have attempted to put it into Latin, and there's been various attempts. So, 
you know, I wish there were somehow a way to know which is the official. And maybe there's someone out there that knows that there is an official one. The rest of us out here are just sort of floundering. Well, since it's a uh, totally approved apparition, you would think that uh, that prayer being part of part of one of the apparitions, you would think that some scholar in uh, the Vatican would have deciphered it and given an exact version of it. I, right. I, I, that's what I would think. The yeah. one that gets me, though, is why why don't we do the St. Michael and, and the Salve Regina? They're, they're not hard. They're, 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 they're not. They're, they're, um, and, and every kid, uh, you got eight kids, I bet every one of them can sing Salve Regina. Yeah. All of our kids can do the Salve Regina. So they can all sing it. It's kind of like Mel Tillis. He could sing the song, but he couldn't talk it. So right. people can sing the Salve Regina, but okay. Well, I'm it. actually one of those people. I I, I really? stutter. No, I have a hard time. I'm telling you, I'm just a Texas guy, <laughs> man. I'm just an ignorant Texan. I don't know. I actually do get a when it's recited. I have a hard time. I get nervous. Oh, <laughs> I don't not, know. I guess I said it so many times. By not myself. you. You're good. Um, now I never do it in public because no one ever asked for it. And I'm always afraid that if I start doing it, I'm going to be in a room with 150 people playing, praying a rosary. Yeah. And I'm going to be the only one saying a salve. <laughs> so uh, I, uh, I, I'm going to, I'm going to leave that one. I'll let, I'll let you, uh, ga uh guys and gals out there and in, in the uh, listening and viewing audience. Um, you cue me one time when, Hey Mike, when you get to salve Regina, Go ahead, Go ahead and do it. Yeah, say it. Confuse everybody. <laughs> All right, well, it. I just put on the screen the one that, that I'm familiar with. It's Omi Yesu, Dimite Nobis Debita Nostra, Libra Nosab Igne Inferne, Conduc. I like that. Conduc in Chalem, Omnis Animus, Praesertum Elas Que Maxime, Indigent Misericordia Tua. That's the one that I that I'm more familiar with. But again, I've heard I've heard other Oh My Jesus prayers in the Rosary. So. I don't know. Now that we got that settled. Yeah, <laughs> now that we got that settled. Uh, well, it's always great. You know, I love, you know, we had Jesse Romero on the other day, and he's all about the Latin, and we're talking about the Latin. And, you know, I in the old days, maybe a couple of years ago, I would have thought this would bore people to tears, but it's it's exciting to see how many people are eager to learn Latin, pray Latin, get into the Latin. So why not talk Jesse about got it? A, Jesse got a new book coming out, doesn't he? He does. It's I, He's just sent me a signed copy, and we did a show on it this last week. It was really popular it's called uh, the devil in the city of angels jesse romero it, really a good. very uh <laughs> very similar track to a friend of mine ralph sarchi who's uh, they mm -hmm. based the movie deliver us from evil on and, uh, -huh. uh ralph was a nypd sergeant who dealt with demonic uh, cases um in new york which is equally may even be filled with more evil if that's possible <laughs> than in than in the uh the barrios if you will of los angeles yeah well, I'm telling you, Jesse Romero talked to Ramirez and a bunch of these psycho satan satanic murder killers. It's crazy. It's crazy. You should have him on. Okay, so just a couple hours ago, Mike, we were going to do this this interview anyway, but a couple hours ago, Netflix, and I canceled Netflix because they got all this pro-abortion nonsense. We don't have Netflix at our house. Me but, neither. Yeah. Cut it, right? Why, why do Netflix when you can watch you know mike church or other people on youtube and the <laughs> internet right better stuff yeah so anyway we got rid of netflix but they they rolled out a trailer kind of surprised us it's called two popes anthony hopkins is playing pope bennett the 16th and this other actor whom i i, I recognize john price ah that's who plays pope francis john price yeah so and he I'm looks gonna, like him yeah uh it it looks like it's going to be well done. Of course, it's going to be Hollywood. They're going to screw everything up. They're probably going to trash Catholic. I don't know. I I, I don't get my hopes up on any of these things. But it, artistically, it looks pretty impressive. And, and the premise of two popes, Benedict and Francis, is something that we talk about all the time. You know, how is it that Benedict is a Papa Emeritus? How is it that he wears the white cassock and... And, and the trailer even, you know, emphasizes things like the shoes. We'll see and that. And a box full of red shoes. A box full a of box. red shoes. Not a set, it's, a box. It shows the ring, you know. It shows some of these things that, that I discussed in my book, Infiltration. And I don't buy into the Sochi thesis at all about two popes. But uh, this, this Netflix, it looks like it's a film, not a series, I think is going to raise the question and get more people talking. So... We're going to take a minute here and roll that 
uh, you've seen it already, Mike. You won't see it on your side, but everybody on their side is going to see uh, this trailer. So we will roll it now. Here we go. Do you know the Beatles? Yes, I know who they are. Of course you do. <laughs> Eleanor Rigby. Who? Eleanor Rigby. No, I don't know. You know, Yellow Submarine. Dum, 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 dum. Yellow Submarine. Let's I'm see. guessing that's, that's it's Francis funny. there. <laughs> You've been one of my uh, harshest critics. The way you live is a criticism. There's the shoes. There's the ring. Your shoes are a criticism. You don't like my shoes? <laughs> you think you know better? We are no longer oh, yeah. part of this world. That's, there they are. You know, the hardest thing is to listen, to hear his voice, God's voice. Cuando tenga la tierra, te lo juro semilla, nuestro fin. It's not me who needs to be satisfied. It's 1.2 million believers. Science! You know, there's a saying, God always corrects one pop by presenting the world with another pop. I should quite like to see my correction. Or would you? All right, there it is. So um, he says, there's a saying that God likes to correct one pope by sending another pope. And then he says, I'd like to know who will be my correction. And there's Bergoglio sitting actually, right there. I, I, actually, I think he says, I'd, I'd like to know what will be my career. Oh, with, yeah, right. Because he's talking to Francis. I mean, Papa Francis is sitting right there. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple of things that stood out of me immediately. Number one, beautiful cinematography. Beautiful. So they, they I got mean, Mike, do you think the really... Vatican let them shoot there, or do you think they recreated all that? Uh, you saw the shot in the Sistine, and I'm looking at it going like, "Ain't no way that's." Well, what I heard I suppose is, you could CGI that, but look no, really I heard, good. I heard that in the film. I, I'm not sure. There's a another show. I don't know if it's Netflix or not that has the young Pope, and there's scenes. And I've heard that for that movie, that they actually recreated a whole Sistine Chapel. Ah, I don't know so if it was CGI it or what. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, there was a uh, there was a movie. There was a global warming movie that was shot. That Pope Francis gave permission for those filmmakers to come on. I, I don't that. see why he would deny uh, the Netflix guys. So uh, cinematography it just jumps right out. It's just beautiful. Uh, very rich, saturated tones, not under mm. understated at all. Second thing, um, they've done a really good job of um, they've done a good job of casting here because Sir Anthony Hopkins. Well, he looks. I, there was one shot. That when they when they showed him walking towards the camera from about ten feet away, I thought it was Benedict. Yeah. And then I then I caught you know it was Hopkins. So you know they they got the catch. You know what's interesting? Hopkins played. I don't know if you saw the movie. Uh, something with the devil. He played Father Gabriel in a morph, right? Oh, was he a morph? I haven't seen the film. I think that they based the character okay. on a morph. I don't think it actually was a morph, but the Vatican exorcist, right? So he's played the Vatican ex he's played some facsimile of the Vatican exorcist Gabriel Lamort. Um, uh, he's also played Hannibal Lecter three times. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, I'm going, and okay. and he he also played C.S. Lewis. Yes, he did. He's now, he's Jonathan been... Price. I don't have a big uh, IMDb bio on the guy, uh, but he certainly uh, I don't think he was quite plump enough. But he certainly had the facial uh, features for Papa Francis. Uh, mm -hmm. Good enough to make you think uh, that, okay, you got a dialogue between Benedict and Francis going on. You know, I'm watching this and I'm going, this is like Michael Matt's dream come true. <laughs> this is, <laughs> before you asked me to comment on it, or, or when you asked me, I'm going, this, is Taylor, this is Taylor Marshall's dream come true. We're finally going to get an answer to the question. Why did you step down? Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay, why do we have you two guys here? So that's what I was thinking. But um, there's a couple uh, uh, things in there that kind of tip the, uh, the hand. It looked to me like Benedict is being presented as the old 
you know, curmudgeon, stoic guy, you with know, the who needs shoes. To, he just won't get out of the way with his stupid shoes and, and his, his stupid ring. ring and his who is this god you speak of that you want to talk to? Yeah. And then there was the oh well I represent the whole world. You see, it does not matter Yeah, what he's writing no, you know, he they got Bergoglio on a moped. 1.2 billion believers, you see. You see, you all trads. You know, you know nothing about the believers. I am so close to the believer. So it looked at me like you're going to get a setup here. Like Trump is orange man bad, right? Right. Right? Yeah. White Pope bad. New Pope good. So uh, I don't know. I guess it comes out in November. It, it said coming to theaters. I saw that. It's Netflix going to theaters. And, and this is this would be one of the first ones ever, I think, right? Is this happening? Well, well the, the, the movie with the, uh, with the, the now B-list boomers from Goodfellas with De Niro and Pecci in it, they're trying to get that one into theaters. Oh, okay. Netflix is. Um, now, uh, there may be two reasons why they want to get in theaters and, and why it's got to get in in November. Uh, well, one, the director may want the, the, uh, the statistics on his resume. Mm. Box right. office opening of $30 million. That's He's the, the director. Uh, and the second is they may think they've got something for an Academy Award. Oh, and it's got to go. It has to be theatrically released for for it to be eligible for an Academy Award. So, uh, by the way, hat tip my to my uh, midday uh, friend and host on the Crusade Channel, my little radio station, Richard Barrett, for bringing that up because I really didn't know that till I listened to him today. And he's going, "Well, if you want to get a, if you want to get an Oscar nomination, it's got to go to the box office." Interesting. So, yeah. So maybe that's what's going on. But yeah. I tell you what, it certainly has my attention. How about it's you? It's got my attention. And you know what's interesting about it is, you know, as much as we talk about, oh, simplicity and downplaying, you know, the Tridentine Church and all that. When it comes to Hollywood, I've said this once, I'll say it a million times. They know what Catholicism should look like. They sure do. Yeah, they don't have, they don't have you know, the Pope. Uh, you know, just hanging out in a shack somewhere. He's he's contemplating in the Sistine Chapel, right? And they've got the shoes and the ring. And I mean, that is the glitter and the flair, right? That tells people this is Catholic. And for some reason, the Catholic Church, we somehow think that's bad. Like, we need, we got to hide it, you know? Especially well, under the current pontificate. Well, see, uh, I think the exact opposite. Uh, I don't think you hide it. Uh, the pap uh, the papacy is a monarchy. Mm -hmm. He is you know, the successor, the vicar of Christ. Um, should dress in regal robes. He, he, he should be the, the most well dressed, if you will, the most well dressed man on earth. He should be in his easy top song. Yeah, you know, everybody loves a sharp dressed pope. Sh sharp dressed pope, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're being just a little facetious here, folks. But um, I like the pomp and circumstance because it means that there's something going on here that doesn't happen every day. It's not every day the Holy Father walks into a room. It's not every day where you are, and now you being whoever is why is seeing the Holy Father. It's not every day the Holy Father, uh, even though he may, you know, swat the hand away. No, don't, don't. Why? What is it with you? What is it with you, faithful? You want to kiss my ring? Get away! Get away! Get away! Um, it's not every day that, that that you get the opportunity to do that, and I think it's a um, it's compliment to the office. And it, mm -hmm. it, it's uh, and, and now give the filmmakers just a, a little bit of credit because I'm sure they'll hang themselves and we'll re be regretting that we said anything good about exactly. them. Exactly. Yeah, November. November. Gonna... Um, but they do. They did at least try to do a little due diligence research and research and present an actual regal presentation. Now they may be presenting it purely so people go. You see, you, you see, it's all fake and they put the clothes on and all that you, look you're a priest taylor you know this better than anyone no i was an anglican cleric don't confuse people i was an anglican no, cleric you go you you go to a vestment process mm -hmm. and the vestment process everything that you wear has a meaning you don't just and put a it prayer. on and, and a, a prayer. prayer that goes with it uh, every single uh, thing every single thing the cincture the amis you know the the all the stole, the maniple, all of it. Right. Every piece has, there's a purpose for it, and each one has a prayer, and they're all quite beautiful. Um, yeah. uh, and then and those things aren't just thrown on there. You know, you look really nice with, uh, no. You know, I know you know the story of the mitre, 
the mitre is to symbolize the flame, the flame of the Holy Ghost coming out of the head of, right, it's supposed to look, uh, tongue of fire. Look, right, your head's on fire for Christ. Yeah, from it's Pentecost. It's to, right, right. So it's what it's supposed to look like. So everything that's in the, in that ensemble, if you will, um, is intentional, which is you know, why I think uh, Pope Francis has rubbed so many people the wrong way with his, I, I don't need these, I don't need these trappings, I don't need, well, whether you need them or not is immaterial. The office requires it, so <laughs> you're right. going to have to put it on. But I'm, uh, I'm very, uh, very intrigued by this film. I really am. I am too. I mean, I, I in a certain, you know, like I said, I canceled Netflix, doesn't run in my house, I'm against Netflix. Um, and so I'm kind of torn, you know, like, okay, I don't have to buy Netflix to watch it. It will be in the theater. So I guess I'll just wait and see what the reviews are. And if it's not horrendous and sacrilegious, maybe I'll see it. I remember once uh, uh, B1, B1 Bob Dorn and Congressman Dorner was filling in for Rush back in the 90s. So before, just right at the time I was getting into the business, 91 or 92. And it's about the time Oliver Stonehead's uh, film mm. JFK came out. And uh, I think B1 Bob had been on one of those commissions that had uh, that investigated the Kennedy assassination, and he was talking about it, and he was doing. I know Stone's gonna. You know, Bob had a, you know, a very deep voice, B1 Bob, and he was talking about. I know the Stone is gonna mess it up, and this and that. And then he goes, "This is Congressman Dornan at the time," and then then he goes, he goes, "Well, you know what." I guess I'm just gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to break down and go to the theater, and I'm just gonna. I'm gonna have to go and watch it. And then he <laughs> caught himself. Then he caught himself, and he goes, "Wait a minute! I'm not giving Oliver Stone a nickel. Uh, I know the guy that owns the theater. I'll, I'll ask him to sneak in the back door or something." Then he caught himself. And goes like, "I'm a member of Congress. I just said I'm gonna right. sneak in a movie theater." So um, it, 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 it's something. The point is, is he was dealing with um, a conflict of interest there. Right. If you, if you, folks, if you're out there and you're still watching Netflix and you're watching us too, get with the program. Yeah, you're not These on the team, made man. A show called Big Mouth. This is child teenager pornography. Yes. I'm talking full blown, and it's in its second season now. Yeah. Um, Netflix, I don't see how. Oh, if you're watching ahead. Netflix, supporting Netflix. You're not on the team. Pray the rosary every day. Latin mass. Get rid of Netflix. I mean. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, Father uh, Chad Rippinger says on this subject, and we just talked about this on my radio show, the Mike Church show uh, this morning, or I talked about it, because somebody called me and said, well, Mike, what do we do? And I go like, well, you know, Father Rip says it's going to take heroic acts of discipline and virtue. If you really want to do it, if you really want to not because money's fungible. If you really want to not have any of your money go to a tainted source like a Netflix or something, you're going to have to have uh, just a, a, a you have to pray for the graces, first of all, uh, it, it, to have this di a discipline to where, you know, I really want to see this. I'm just I'm not going to do it. I, I won't. I'm not going to give license to it or I'm not going to be a party to the, you know, one of the nine ways to be a party to sin. Um, I, I'm just I'm going to avoid it. Um, the circle's closed. It's getting smaller, and smaller, and that's going to be uh, to become more difficult. So yeah, you know I, I'm a little bit uh, careful when it comes to boycotts because you know my let's say my child is sick. I got to go get the antibiotics at Walgreens. I know Walgreens sells condoms on aisle two, and I know they sell the birth control pill, but I got to get my antibiotic for my kid, so I can't really boycott the joint right so, well um so here's another question or here's a, here's another thing that uh you can try and do now again none of these things are foolproof uh in my little hamlet that i live in in madisonville louisiana we have a a guy we have two now there's one now there's two that started their own pharmacies they're not chains they're small and usually if i look at it, i don't get that many prescriptions but if I uh, look at the prescription and go like, all right, that looks really complicated. He's probably not going to have that. Uh, I'll expect it's going to take me a day. Now, he can get it the next day. Um, but <clears throat> I haven't seen any of the things that you mentioned in his little store. Right. Now, right. he may fill 
ortho novum birth control prescriptions because mm. he gets them. I don't Plan know. B, I never what not. Plan B. I never asked. I've never seen the display. You know, at uh, at Walgreens, they I don't know. They still have. They have a Plan B display. They have an abortive. Mm -hmm. they, they used to have mm -hmm. an abortive oh, facing yeah. display right there when you go to the checkout. Little girls can't miss this. Oh, had a uh, had, had a night with a uh, you know uh, uh, um, uh, an unfortunate ending. Don't worry, here stand in line right here for Plan B. We'll get you taken care of in just a moment here. Uh, I haven't seen one of those. So, I, I, you know, uh, Taylor, I think it's one of the things that. Uh, we could all try and do a better job of. Right. I think we try, but I think we also realize, you know, getting groceries. Almost Same every thing? grocery store I know pretty much is going to sell prophylactics. Here's one for you. We're on YouTube right now. YouTube delivers a bunch of <laughs> trash to the world. I mean, gazillions of hours of trash. Uh, things against morality, things against the church, things, things against our Lord. So, you know, I, I think that we... We try our best and we do what we can, but we also realize that, you know, we can't go, I'm not a huge fan of the Benedict option because we can't go full Amish. I just, I don't, I just, you know, I just, that's my take on it. I'm still working it out. Well, um, I'm still working it out because Dreyer is a fallen away Catholic. And if you're going to be a fallen away Catholic, right away book about a fallen away saint thing. Go get your own saint. Mm. You don't get to use you don't get to use one of our saints. Uh, he's Eastern Orthodox. I know there's yeah. some Eastern Orthodox uh, saints. Um, uh, help me out here. Before before, uh, before uh, the schism? Before the schism. I, oh, I know St. Athanasius, St. Basil, St. So Gregory uh, Nyssa, St. Gregory Nazianzus. So, so you have your, you got your own saints. You but, don't use, you can't use one of ours, okay? If you are, <laughs> then the you need to come back to the faith, right? Uh, the second thing about the Benedict option is, and you have to know this, my good friend, uh, uh, Saint, uh, Brother Andre Marie, St. Benedict Center, uh, told me this uh, once when I, we had a conversation about this, uh, about the book. And then he goes, well, you know, Mike, you know what, what Dreher doesn't understand is Benedict of Norcia, of Norcia, did not do what he did so that he could start his own Benedict option. Mm. He 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 felt that if he stayed in Rome, that there was so much illicit evil all mm. around him that he didn't think that he could remain holy, and yeah. he also didn't think that he alone that you know that he could stop at any of it. So all he was trying to do was get away. He just went away because you know the, the the first two years I think of Benedict's escape towards Monte Cassino was in a cave as a hermit. Yeah, he's solo. Absolutely solo, um, and you know, as the story goes, they uh, many uh, many religious went out and say, "Hey, man, where's Benedict?" And they kind of found him. And of course, you know, he had his graces from uh, from this solitude uh, that he had gotten, and uh, miraculous things started happening. So they kind of came to him. Well, we're going to go here and then ultimately wind up on top of a mountain where what a. a uh, a temple to the, the god Apollo was, I think, yeah. and turn that into our our monastery. We're going to... He didn't go out. You can see how Hollywood would do this. I think the answer is monasticism. <laughs> no, that's, <laughs> that's not how that yeah, Most of those early, early monks, you know, Pacomius and all, they just wanted to be alone and pray and not be corrupted by society. So, But then other people were like, that's a good idea. I want to know what that guy's all about. And they went out in the wilderness and found these guys and the Holy ghost had some plans for it. I do think though, that the general idea of a separation is a good thing. Um, uh, on my show, I, I talk about it frequently. If you don't like the mainstream you're in, then create a new one. Mm -hmm. So if you don't like, uh, uh, I don't like going to these stores. I only go to these grocery stores in my town. All right. Do you have any property? Is there a farmers market? Do you do you know farmers? Uh, if you don't like this, if this is the mainstream, this is what's available to you, and you want an alternative, start talking to people about farming the alternative. You can sit there behind your keyboard and become a Twitter warrior, or you can actually go out and do something about it. And I think that you know, uh, starting, and it doesn't have to be big. Every um, there was a book that came out. I withdraw my consent. I secede from this entity. That you know, life now, especially 
and this is advanced five or six years from the time that book came out. Life is a series of, uh, we started the show off with Latin, say si data, to withdraw. You know, I, I'm going to say si data to the, to the antechamber, to the parlor. Life today for the good Christian, the good Christian Catholic, is a series of withdrawals from things that you know are not conducive to trying to live a holy life. Um, even though our Lord tells us to be in the world and not of the world, there are some instances where we're not under an obligation, I don't think, to remain somewhere where there's evil all around us. Yeah, especially as, as parents with kids, you know, we have to be we have to be careful uh, of where we're at. Um, but, you know, like when it comes to the Benedict option, since we're talking about it, I just don't see the Catholic imperative in the history of the church for families to go out into the wilderness right i mean if right. you look at the benedict was a bunch of celibate dudes <laughs> with with <laughs> they were eunuchs for the kingdom right i just don't know if my if joy and me and the eight kids are just going to go live out in a hut or a yurt outside a monastery for the next 18 years while you raise these kids you'd have to find one first of all <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, not too far from both of us is Clear Creek in Oklahoma. You've been there? I have not, but I've heard it. Oh, I've heard many go. glowing things. It's awesome. It's really cool. Now, I know we have at least two families. I know Sam Guzman moved there. The Did, guy, he? Catholic Did he move there? Pretty, pretty sure Sam and his wife moved there. Re outside the, the gates now? Well, I think outside. But the, near. In the little yeah, yeah, near. Um, so there are people that have actually moved there. I think that that's an option. You know, I was I was uh, talking today on the on, on the radio show. I have a little devotion, um, a, a confraternity. It's called the Crusader Knights of the Most Holy Rosary, and uh, we have one intention for each of the five uh, decades. So I don't have fifteen; I have five, and they're all you know about uh, throwing into your rosary prayers. Um, like the first one is for po the politicians that have the power to do so. That you know, we'll get a repeal of laws uh, that support abortion, contraception, pornography, and sodomy. All those things were illegal 50 years ago. Yeah, 50 years ago, every one of those things was totally illegal and not practiced very widely. And then for a restoration of uh, of laws against usury, which also right. surprise, surprise, the United States, many of the states. And there were some federal laws on the book. Actually, had some pretty good laws against usury. Yeah. Uh, they're all gone. Uh, uh, <clears throat> these confraternities, fine confraternities that you can join. That's another, uh, that's another, say, uh, Dara. Leave the mainstream, join a smaller stream. Um, there's many things. Like, uh, I think our mutual friend, Father Richard Heilman, has mm -hmm. uh, those, those Roman Catholic men. That's right. You know, and, and fathers trying to to lead a generation of, of men more your age than mine, because you still have kids, mine around in the house, uh, but trying to lead a generation of, of men, especially men of fathering age and parenting age, trying to lead them to uh, being men. You're the leader of your house. You're not a soy boy. <laughs> You're not right. a sissy. You're a real man. You take control. You give the orders. You trust your wife to run the household. You know, there is this, and I was hoping that you would bring this up, but, but if you don't mind, can I bring up the big Stephanie Nicholas controversy? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, so folks, if you haven't been following this, Dr. Marshall and I, uh, uh, Doc's partner in crime, Tim Gordon, Tim's uh, beautiful wife, Steph, uh, my wife, Stephanie Nicholas, the blogger, and many others are, uh, uh, got pulled into uh, Matt Gaspers of Catholic Family News, Got poured into the pulled, pulled into this web that began when Stephanie did the unthinkable thing of writing a piece on feminine modesty that was published in Catholic Family News on the feast of the Immaculate Conception. I think, and, uh, and you know, Matt Gaspers wrote, wrote a really nice little uh, intro, uh, editor's introduction saying we think this is an appropriate day to start this discussion. Now, one thing that's come out of it is that. At least there's been a dialogue about it. These are, the people are now talking about this. And uh, this controversy uh, that was discussed was, is there an actual Catholic teaching on women in the workplace? Liberal Catholic women 
The ones who are Eucharistic ministers on weekends say, no, no. That went out with the Second Vatican Council. You, you, you rad, rad track knuckle dragon Neanderthals. You're not going to push us back into the kitchen. I'm not putting my apron back on. Nobody asked you to put an apron on. We asked a simple question. Is there an actual teaching on this? And uh, come to find out, not only is there a teaching, it's quite like most teachings, Catholic teachings, quite beautiful. Um, and it doesn't say that, okay, uh, you've got a husband and you have children. Um, we're going to put the 60-pound iron ball on your left ankle. We're going to attach it to a chain. Uh, you can only go out on weekend on, uh, on one weekend, one weekend night. You can only go out for, for 59 minutes and 59 seconds. This is ridiculous. There's nothing of the sort. And, of course, like any good Catholic rule, if it were to come up, there's an exception to it. But I think it's instructive for two things. One, there are a lot of women out there and young men, and I think this is very a positive thing that we can take away from our, our time, uh, that are very that are searching for something that they can really believe in, something that's good, true, and beautiful, and that does not seem to them, to them at least on the surface, to be something that's fat, that's fleeting. Right. And I think they're finding it in traditional Catholicism or just in Catholicism. I think they're finding it, they're seeing it, and then they start to learn about it. They go, wait a minute, you guys have been doing this for how many centuries? Right. Um, that's one thing. Uh, the second thing is people that are opposed to this are all now exposing themselves uh, and letting and, and letting anyone know that well that's not the Catholicism that 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 I was taught right. and that's not that's that modern Catholicism. I'm sorry, I, I didn't know that there had to be a modern Catholicism. Was there a modern Catholicism at the time of Saint King Louis the Ninth? I would or, maybe contemporary. Or we call the it apostles. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the apostles have someone going like, you know, you guys are stood back in the Christ days. You guys need to get with it. It's been 13 years since he died, man. Come on. There's just trends happening here in Rome. I mean, that's how ridiculous it is, right? Well, I mean, I, what's happening? And and to go back to, to the original clip that we talked about with the uh, the new movie, The Two Popes. The current pontificate, see, under Benedict XVI, all the cracks were plastered over, right? We had Sumorum Pontificum, we had the Pope, he was dressing traditional, it was kind of, everyone could hold hands in the same room, you know, and pass the peace, right? No problem. When Pope Francis came on the scene, he started extending all of these things, things that you'd seen in Vatican II, St. Paul VI, even in John Paul II, ecumenism dialogue, all of these things that Benedict in a sense kind of turned the volume down. And so now it is impossible to be a middle right Catholic. It's impossible. And what's happening is, is people are getting more and more pushed over either to tradism, as they calling it, or modernism. Have you seen this, Mike? I mean, this is what I see every oh, single yeah, day absolutely. on Twitter. And I think the Stephanie Nichols thing, I think all of these things are making Catholics ask the questions all over again. And that is, what is marriage? And you can't just quote theology of the body to me. I want to see old, I want to see Trent, I want to see popes, I want to see a tradition here. What is What is the role of men? What is the role of women? You have millions of men who are looking at pornography every day. You got so many men, Catholic men, trying to get out of pornography. And, you know, going to a seminar isn't working. And so they're now looking for drastic means. They're going to traditional priests. They're learning about the seven deadly sins. They're learning about the virtues. They're learning about vice. They're learning about the traditional norms of penance. You know, we didn't talk about penance in the 80s and the 90s. Penance. Right. And so all, all of a sudden people are returning to traditional norms and it's not just the TLM. It's not just the traditional Latin math. That's not what it's all about. I mean, it is all about that. That's not the sole issue. The sole issue is formation. Do you believe in hell? Do you believe in indulgences? Do you believe in penances? Do you believe in Friday penance? Do you believe in Sunday obligation? These are the traditional norms, the bedrock, the framework of being a Catholic. And now people are are suffering, you know, kids born out of wedlock, divorce, porn, 
drugs, all these things. And people say, well, what's the solution? It sure isn't what Slim Jim Martin's teaching. <laughs> well, I'll, uh, I'll chime in on a couple of those points. One, the porn addiction. Uh, there's uh, guys and ladies, if you, have, if you have a husband or a son, heaven forfend, there's one cure. Here, I'll show it to you. That's the cure. This is the cure. It will, it, it will, it, it won't just, it won't tamp it down. It will cure it. She is the cure. Uh, when you, uh, and I, um, I want to add here, Mike, it's not just boys anymore. There's a female porn and masturbation problem too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wasn't aware of that. Um, but take it from someone who escaped the issue, if you will. Uh, I came back to the faith in 2011, uh, Played around with the Latin Mass. D didn't believe in the Sunday obligation. I'll tell you the truth. And I was baptized. Fell you didn't away. believe it or you didn't know it? Did, didn't know it. Didn't know it. Was not aware of it. So you'd go to a, a traditional Latin Mass and maybe show up three weeks again later and a month later. and Well, you know, uh, despite their reputations as being meanies, you guys are mean. I would go, but you guys are mean and scowling. Nobody was mean and scowled at me when mm -hmm. I went one week and they didn't see me for three weeks and then I went another week and then they didn't see me for two weeks and then I went another week and they didn't see me for a week and then I went another week and went, all right, there's something to this. <laughs> uh, and then it came back and uh, probably full-time in 2012, haven't missed a Sunday, I think I missed one and I was sick on that one, uh, a Sunday obligation since. And I'm not boasting or bragging, I'm just telling you that this is how it can work. Um, but it really didn't hit totally home and I wasn't totally sold, uh, and practicing the whole thing until December the 8th, 2014, when, uh, on the, um, uh, uh, the feast of the, um, oh gosh, help me out here. December the 8th, Immaculate, uh, Eighth Immaculate Conception, Immaculate Conception. Um, uh, I did my consecration through Louis de Montfort to the blessing. Oh the yeah, blessing. that's great. Yeah. And uh, you know what I discovered after that? I discovered that my entire life, from the time I was a little boy until the time I made that consecration, there were little tiny, you know, that uh, that uh, ridiculous uh, church of the Church of Jesus of nice painting of the footprints. Mm. Oh, those were the times when I was carrying you, my son. You know, you know I, where have you been, Lord? Well, uh, you used to walk beside me. Well, I wouldn't walk. I was carrying, you know. Right. Um, the refrigerator I, magnet. Refrigerator magnet, yeah. right? The I'm, I'm a good person. I'm a really good person. Uh, I found out, and I'm still discovering some. I discovered one not two weeks ago. I, I found out through just uh, memories and uh, talking to family members and just thinking about things, sort of piecing together that my goodness, she, I was a Marian from birth. <laughs> Taylor, I didn't know until 2015 the first. Condomas after my birthday, for heaven's sake, I'm born on February the 2nd. I didn't know that that was Condomas until 2015. Get out. Get out. So I'm going like, from, the, from my birth, she had me. From my birth. Um, so so, I, got, so I, want, I want to share a, a little story on February 2nd because it relates to my conversion. I was an Episcopalian priest. My wife and I, we were going to go to Italy for our fifth anniversary, our wedding anniversary. She was pregnant with number four. And we went to Rome. And I was wearing clerics. I was Father Marshall. I had the cassock. I had the black suit, the, rope, the collar and everything. And we went on the Scavi tour on February 2nd. That's the tour underneath the Vatican where you go down and you see the bones of Peter. I was so moved in that moment. And I was asking a million questions to the priest who was the guide. He was like, you know, who's this married priest with his wife, pregnant wife, blonde, pregnant wife down here in the Scavi. It's kind of a weird thing. You know, he's like, what's going on here? After they all left, I stayed down in that chamber and I prayed and I said, St. Peter, this is real. And I want to be in communion with you, whatever that means. After it was over, the guide, the priest said, Hey, you want to go to mass with the Pope? 
And he said, yeah, sure. He's like, oh, I'll, I'll hook you up. So we followed him into the Vatican, passed some Swiss guards. He got us two tickets to go to mass with Pope Benedict the 16th on February 2nd, candle mass in St. Peter's. Wow. It was in the evening. It was in the evening. The whole church was, was candle lit. It was real candle mass. And during that mass, Mike, when it was the consecration, I knew that was the body of Christ. I knew that was the Pope. I knew I was in schism. I knew I was a heretic, and I knew I would go to hell if I didn't get in communion with that man. Wow. On February 2nd. February the 2nd. I came home from that trip. I met with the local Catholic bishop. I met with my Episcopalian bishop. And over a period of a month or two, renounced my orders, and the Episcopal Church came into the Catholic Church. But February 2nd was the lightning bolt. Candle Mass. I, uh, I, hey, it's a great day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a big fan of February the 2nd. Uh, but the point being that uh, if you want to escape many uh, of the sins of the flesh, especially for men, for, uh, for, for men and for young men, pick a devotion up to our Blessed Lady. Uh, as many priests will counsel you, three Hail Marys in the morning, pray for purity and chastity. Absolutely. Three Hail Marys immediately for, before bed. Pray for purity and chastity. You know, it's funny, Taylor. You're seeing two guys, me and aged geezer, you, uh, you're you working on it someday, right? Two, two, uh, two fully abro- uh, grown adult males talking about prayers that you do on your knees like you're little boys before you go to bed. <laughs> um, but I think if you teach boys these prayers from when they're little boys, uh, if you teach them to get close to the Blessed Virgin, because like they say, and I believe this with all my heart and my soul to be true, no child of Mary is ever lost. That's right. And she will, she will uh, and I can just tell you from personal experience, guys, and, and ladies, if you have if you have that problem in your head, you think you have it in your house, go to her. Ask her to help. Go to St. Joseph. I mean, the St. Joseph devotion is also uh, something I think every, I think every household should have a house, should have a devotion to the Holy Family. Okay, if you're going to be yeah. Catholic, you have to have some kind of a devotion to the Holy Family. And that includes some kind of iconography, some kind of sacramental life, uh, rosaries, St. Joseph prayers, St. Joseph altars, you know, however you can do it. You know, the Holy Family, uh, God gave us the perfect model. I, and nothing happens by accident. Nothing happens by coincidence. Okay. So I think we just go ahead and take advantage of it. Um, and it's not hard to do. And I also don't think that, you know, you, this is what you trash. So you see, you try to get us into this. I think you do it at, uh, you know, as the grace comes to you. I don't, I, I, I don't have a, you, the reason it's three Hail Marys is obvious. Trinity. Okay. That's not me making that up, but I don't think there's a wrong way to have a devotion to the blessed Virgin. And I think if you read St. Alphonse's uh, Logori's book, uh, the Salve Regina book, where he explains why she is the mediatrix of all graces so those stories that he gave, you ever read it? Which one? Uh, St. Alphonsus Liguori's uh, Salve Regina. Mm-mm, I haven't read it. Um, uh, there's an example at the end of every chapter. Uh, first he does the Hail Mary, then he does the Salve Regina line by line and, and does a, a reason why this line is important. Uh, so there's like 32 or 34 examples in it. And every single one of those examples is a story of someone that was falling away and the only reason that they were saved, either either in death or near death, um, was because they had a devotion to the Blessed Virgin. Mm. Um, and so she never leaves anyone. Yeah. So for many of these problems, yes, turn to our Blessed Lady. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, I, I want to jump on one of the things you said. It's like praying these prayers on our knees like little boys. And how sad it is that in the current church, it's assumed that the only people who are going to be praying these beads and the praying on their knees is little boys and grandmas, right? And we need mm-hmm. to get back to this crusader mentality. The reason that religious wear the beads on their hip like that is that's how the crusaders used to wear it. They used to put there their is. rosary there with the first, I didn't know this, uh, Father Donald Calloway told me this, the first historical mention of the rosary beads is with the crusader sword so if there's a there's an overlapping there with the sword and the beads going into battle and so all the religious of europe after that wore the beads like that's part of their habit 
because it's a weapon. It's like going around with your sword hanging out. It's the weapon. So, we, you know, we need to get, if you're a man and you're not praying the rosary, you're not on the team. No, it's like you're, you're it's like you showed up for the Crusades and you and you brought a stick and a slingshot and we're like, ah, you can't really fight with us. You're not in it. You're not in it. You need to get a sword. You need to get a broadsword, and then you can come. Well, the rosary is a is a weapon. Um, I'm gonna have to cut this short in just a minute. I uh, I got a live show to get to another one to get to. When do you when um, you when are you leaving here? Uh, How many minutes? Uh, Fifty eight past. Sounds good. Six right. minutes from now. Good. Uh, okay, so um, in in studying, uh, okay, for, for those of you that don't know, I founded this thing called the Crusade Channel. Now, when we came up with the name Crusade Channel for our radio station, uh, I was basically kicked off of Sirius XM satellite radio after being on it for 13 years. Mm. I founded that joint. I was the longest running radio show on it. Uh, I would happily give it all up all, all over again. I've been doing this for 28 years. But we originally had a couple of different names, and uh, they all sounded good. But it wasn't until someone suggested that well, we need a name for our crusade, or a name that really speaks and says, you know, this is our crusade. And I went, why not crusade? That sounds good. <laughs> um, but I think we were just taken from crusade is is, is uh, a pro, was a was a, an attempt to go into the Holy Land and to take it back from the Saracens and from the Mahometans um, and to stop the desecration and to go retrieve the holy objects. And to go liberate a couple hundred thousand Christians that had been impressed into service, mm -hmm. um, uh, and get it, the tomb back, and get the tomb back. Um, but the, the the term is taken from crucifix. Like most most people that live in Mexico, they probably don't know that the port of Santa Cruz uh, is named Santa Cruz for Holy Cross, because Cortez got there on the feast of Corpus Christi, and so that's that's. Uh, I mean, there's so much history. The word "cruches," like in the uh, in the English, is is rude, uh, right? Rude. There, there's holy rude. R R O D. Uh, and he, uh, um, and, uh, uh, there's roads, holy rule. Uh, the, the 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 term cross is everywhere. It's all around the whole world. So a crusade is really just being a Catholic Christian and doing what uh, our Lord told us to do, which is. I command you to go out and do all these things. You know, there's another thing that part of the, of, uh, of the Catholic Church of nice and hold hands and uh, get the guitars out and then, you know, have a, a consecration of the, of the freshly homosexual guy who just married his boyfriend and is going to commit suicide tomorrow. You know, this church that, uh, that, uh, that does this is totally unaware of the other way of the reverential way of doing things. Right. And that when those things are done in reverence, they're not done out of, we are not Stoics. We're not Stoics. Stoics don't have, or aren't seeking graces. Stoics are obeying rules. Uh, someone in the military might be, be practicing some form of Stoicism, but to them, it seems Stoic to them. It's not Stoic. It's humble. It's a, you're filled with humility. You know, Father Philip W., uh, whose name I'm not allowed to say publicly, Father Philip W. says, Start of humility is reverence towards God. If you have reverence toward God and his things, you will become a humble If you keep Fear it, the Lord. Fear the Lord uh, with all your heart and your soul. So we should all be on crusades. It's not a bad word. It's a beautiful word. Were there abuses in the third crusade? Yes, and St. Bernard of Clairvaux campaigned against them. Yep. The church never endorsed those abuses. Was there an abusive uh, part of the fourth crusade? Yes, there was. Cause is the fifth one, could you say that, well, you could have done it in one? Then maybe you could say that. Um, but the Holy Fathers have only signed off on the Crusades that were just. They were just war actions and uh, that they could be justified. So it's a beautiful word. Don't be afraid of it. I ain't afraid. I ain't afraid. I ain't scared. <laughs> All right. Well, Mike, Mike, you got to run off to your show. Why don't you tell everybody about the app, the Crusade Channel app, what you're doing. Uh, you got one minute here to, to kind of let everybody know, and then you run off to your show. Well, <clears throat> It's the Crusade Channel at crusadechannel.com, and I, uh, I do the morning show. We start at like 5 a.m. Central, and we go to 10. It's a 24-hour day radio station, uh, but this is not your father's Catholic radio station because we're not Catholic radio. We're a radio that's really, really good that has Catholics on it, 
And if we want to talk about Catholic stuff, then we're going to do it. If we want to talk about President Trump, orange man, bad, we're going to do it. If we want to talk about why we all should be preparing to secede from this monstrous union, we're going to talk about it. Are we going to bring Brother Andre Marie on? Yeah, we're going to bring it. We're going to have your friend Father David Nix on? Yes. In the next breath, am I going to have Kevin Goodsman on talk about uh, constitutional law? Yeah. So this is a radio station unlike any other, and uh, it's not a podcast. We do have recordings of our shows. So I invite you, 30 days free, any day of the week, go to crusadechannel.com. On the front page, you'll see the link for the for the 30-day free link. Um, if it's not free, I guarantee you, Taylor Marshall will pay you every penny back that you invest in. <laughs> and Taylor Marshall is a guest. So and I come on, go. too. I like to come and on. And so is Tim Gordon. And, and, and so Tim, is- Tim Gordon comes on. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of the people you see on my channel are also floating over on, on the Crusade channel with Mike Church. We have a mission. Our mission is to restore radio, uh, live radio broadcasting and to preserve it. And our second mission is to prove that I can compete with Limbaugh and the rest of the, uh, of the secular crowd. I can compete. So can you. We can compete with them on an equal footing for in their, in their Protestant profit model. Okay? That's the challenge. No one wants to take it. I've taken the challenge. I invite you to join us. Awesome. All right, Mike Church, thanks for being on. Thanks for talking about this two popes thing and current events and a bunch of other topics. It's been real fun. I'll let you sign out and I'll, I'll close with some words here and some prayers because I know you have to go. Well, uh, folks, I just say, uh, as I say, when I close my radio show every day, thanks to Doug Marshall for having me on. Uh, hopefully we'll do it again uh, uh, real soon. Uh, I bid you adieu as I do every day on the radio. May God bless you and Mary keep you. All right. Thank you. See you next time, all right? All right, brother. All right. Godspeed. Bye now. All right, there's Mike Church. Mike, thanks for coming on. Uh, That was a a good time, good recording. And uh, I just want to close, as I always do, we kind of mentioned it already, pray that rosary every day. Our lady came down from Fatima, said pray the five decades, pray the rosary every day because you're meditating on the mysteries of Jesus Christ. Also, I'd really appreciate it if you would support this channel on patreon we just had today this morning 10 mount 10 million views we hit 10 million views so thanks for everyone who's sharing uh these videos on facebook and twitter and if you'd like for me to send you some signed books some merchandise some coffee mugs keychains other things like that you can go over to patreon.com forward slash dr taylor marshall patreon.com forward slash dr taylor marshall and the most popular thing there of course is all the signed books that I send out every week. Just signed a bunch of books two days ago, and they all went out. So uh, thanks for everyone uh, already who is supporting and making all these videos possible over at patreon.com forward slash Dr. Taylor Marshall. Just a reminder, please subscribe, please like, and I will close with our Latin prayer. In nomine Patris et Fidei et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, Benedicta tu in morieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, or pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et or mortis nostrae. Amen. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancto, sicuterat in principio et nunc et semper, et in secula seculorum. Amen. All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching. God bless. We'll see you in shows to come. Bye.